está. All right, well, apparently we're live. So everybody, my name is uh, Juan Nevarez, and I am a um, singer, songwriter, um, an attorney, practicing attorney. Um, I'm a former member of the Texas House, uh, and I am a an addict and an alcoholic. And I'm a dad, I'm a brother, I'm a husband, I'm a son, teammate, um, I'm all those things. And maybe one of those things interests you more that, or is more relevant to you than one or the other. And if that's so great. So I want to kick things off today and talk about something that I've been doing now for the last eight years. And that's making music, making my own music. And in that talk about just generally, and from an esoteric standpoint, if you will, my idea of the art of songwriting. And it comes from, uh, one, being a fan of music my whole life, as long as I can remember. And as I grew older, being able to identify with certain types of music and why, then be able to discern why those things appeal to me, and then even be more conscious of what the artist was trying to tell me or how it spoke to me and how it made me feel. And I, I came to realize, you know, over the years that, Whatever the art form is, whether it's writing, um, acting, painting, sculpting, whatever it might be, it stems from the desire to want to communicate something. And I think I, I and I've been playing music for a while, I just didn't really have anything that I thought I wanted to say. And I think people, you, you read or you hear about people saying that. You know, I needed to do this. As an artist, I, I needed to do it. And I think that what it means to me, when I hear somebody say that, that means to me want. You know, to me, want is a very strong desire. You know, the things that I want today, for instance, are to talk to you about songwriting. And, uh, and I want to, for instance, continue to stay clean and sober. So those are wants that I have. Do I need to do those things? Well, yeah, I need to stay clean and sober, but it won't matter unless I really want to, and I want to. And I feel the same way about songwriting and creating is I want to do it. Uh, I want to do it because I feel like I can do it well and I've done, done it well and I'm doing it well to the point where you know, we recorded an album on our label and got it out there. And we have our music on different streaming platforms and it's been heard and we played it live. And so, uh, you know, working through the chops of being a working songwriter, uh, you know, I have something to say about it. You know, I want to say something about it. But relative to the idea that I have of people that I believe are giants in it, uh, you know, without mentioning a lot of names of artists that I admire, but looking at how they create and, and uh, their processes, and I think, you know, most people that write anything, they I'd be surprised if they didn't carry a notebook around or something, whether it's digital or analog, that they write their thoughts down. And I do the same thing. I do a fair amount of writing every day. I have exercises in the morning where I get up and I just write uh, words. And from those words, every once in a while, a theme starts to emerge because it's, I find it almost impossible to write scatologically uh, for a very long period of time. At some point, it starts to form some coherence. And that's the whole point of the exercise is being able to kind of clear the pipes, right? It's almost like um, flushing the pipe. You just start getting all these ideas and words out in a jumble that are kind of accumulative. And at some point, it forms itself into this uh, cogent and, and uh, somewhat coherent uh, position, right? Or feeling, or thought, or observation. Or whatever. And that's, that's what I do. And to me, that's the beginning of the art, is creating it, you know, having the idea, the theme. Uh, the circumstances, you know, this is something that's troubling me. I want to talk about it. And, you know, some of the things that I, early on that I wrote about had to do with being an addict and alcoholic. You know, I wrote, it was really the only arena where I could express myself completely honestly because people wouldn't read, or uh, in my opinion, you know, I could chalk it up to, hey, it's just a song. But the truth is it was a lot of autobiographical things about what I was going through, and I was able to express it lyrically and in the music. And it, it, it fueled that. And I think that at the time, I wasn't, I, I, I'm glad that I was able to adopt a healthier way of dealing with my, 
addiction and alcoholism and that's being sober, as opposed to just using writing as an outlet, because I think eventually that wouldn't have been enough. And it wasn't enough, you know, it was gonna kill me. And so uh, now, you know, I approach that to the same way, you know, I, I, I view my addiction and my alcoholism as a source of material in the sense that it connects me a lot to my feelings, right? It connects me to how I feel, how I observe things, how they resonate with me, uh, you know, whether it's politics, because I spent a fair amount of time, you know, in the legislature, and, and whether it's politics at the state level, which, you know, still intimately uh, or aware of, because I just am, and, or at the national or international level, you know, we've had a lot of uh, near chaos, right, uh, over the last few years, a lot of tumultuous events that, you know, have shaped politically how our country's going. And you can't help but see these things, right? And a lot of social upheaval, a lot of things that that continue to bedevil our society in terms of how we treat each other and why we treat each other the way we do. And so uh, as any artist, you know, I comment on those things. They're part of my music. And I, I think I express opinions in that um, or points of view, if you will. And sometimes points of view that other people don't uh, appreciate or embrace. And, you know, I'm not... I'm not doing it to upset them. It's just the way I see things. Right? It's just the truth as I see it, and um, and that, that's what I do. And so, you have one message. That said, oh, we got a little message here. Poncho, your music is awesome, brother. Especially the song Fifty Seven. Well, thank you, Clark. I appreciate that. I uh, so that's a good question because it allows me to talk about this song in particular, and I wasn't planning on talking about a song in particular, but Clark brought it to my attention, so thank you, Clark. And um, what it means to be able to write my own songs, I think encapsulated itself in that song, and I'll tell you why, because I had uh, I had a notion of writing a song about, that was somewhat anthemic, right? And I, just, I don't know, if, I'm not that type of artist that can sit down and say, I'm gonna write an anthem. I don't know, it, it just, but it came out that way because I had a desire and I said, well, yeah. But I really had to be able to write a song and, and want to write a song about what um, leaving and coming home means and, and how hard it's been going and coming. And 57 is literally a highway. It's the highway that connects uh, basically Panama all the way to Canada. But it happens to run through, through here. And, and you know, that song is symbolic in that it's, it, it reveals that part of me that says, you know what, um, I had to leave, but coming home is not bad. And it's this kind of tortured little love song to whatever place that I'm from, which is here. I'm sitting probably 100 feet away from the banks of the Rio Grande, and this is where I'm from, right? And, uh, and so the, the, the lyrics you know, reflect that, right? You know, roaring from a river that I call my home. This is it. And so uh, to that end, that that song was born of that want, if you will, to be able to describe that condition about myself. And uh, so I'm glad people like that song. I really liked it. I liked writing it. Uh, that was her song that when I was done, uh, I wrote it in one setting, and then I kind of messed with the end and the guitar solos and things like that. But I it was very cathartic. To, and the first time I sat down and played it, all the way through and sang it full throat to myself, I uh, it felt very, very cathartic. And so I, um, I'm i glad people enjoy it. I enjoyed writing it. I enjoyed playing it. And I hope to write many more songs like that. So um, I think that, you know, one of the most important things about creating the music as art is understanding the role, like my role, like what's my role in this? Am I, you know, some Zen daddy conduit for something way, way beyond that needs to be communicated to the masses? I don't, I don't think so. I think it's, I think it's more basic. And I think it stems from the notion that, again, I wanted to say something. I didn't, I had a platform to say it as a politician and a public figure, but it wasn't, it wasn't me that was really saying what I wanted to say. And I feel like now I have a lot more transparency about how I live my life. It's reflected in my music. Um, and I like the fact that I don't have anywhere to hide in my music. 
And that really helps me, believe it or not, in being clean and sober is that for me, one of the one of the things that would signal some sort of descent or decline in the relapse is to stop being honest about who I am and what I am and what I'm doing. And, and I think that that part of me that wants to create music and that creates it is very transparent. You know, I'm not hiding anything. You know, it's, uh, as I share it with people that I make it with, you know, I, I write a song or I got an idea, I take it to my producer and my collaborator. He plays a lot of instruments on the record. Uh, you know, it's played as part of the band. You know, the project is called the Red Floors, right? That's the name of the band. But in theory, um, it's a band, but it's me and, and a couple guys that I play with, and then in particular, my producer, uh, Ricky Sanchez. And so, it, you know, yeah, at that point, it becomes very transparent because, you know, it's hard to hide that from another musician, right? Another creator. And I don't want to. You know, I, I want, I don't want, I don't, I don't want the, the, the guessing about what it is I'm trying to do, right? And I think it's good for the audience, right, to say, well, what, you know, what, what is the artist trying to tell me? Because you want the audience to think a little bit about it because there's a lot of different things going on. But I don't, I'm not trying to fool anybody. But this is how I see things. This is, uh, you know, some of the lyrics, they hit you right over the head and others they won't. But it's not uh, a conscious thing where I'm trying to fool you or I'm trying to, I don't want you to have to think at all. It is what it is. No, I mean, sometimes it can mean several different things. And I think that uh, the album has got nine songs on it. And, uh, I wrote most of it during the 2017 legislative session when I was in Austin and played some of these songs live towards the end of the session in a couple of places there in Austin, Texas. And then I came back and, uh, you know, I started to de deteriorate in terms of my, my condition as an addict and alcoholic and it kind of stopped me. And, you know, I had this idea of going in the studio and recording all this stuff, and I just couldn't. And <clears throat> I really didn't uh, know whether I was going to come back to the legislature, and everything just kind of fell apart, right? Personally and uh, and mentally, and, and all those things. It kind of avalanched. And once I got, you know, clear of a lot of these things, and I got to to rehab, uh, you know, I started to formulate the plan in my head. This is what I'm going to do when I get out. And I, I left. You know my instruments for a while like i didn't want to i almost felt like i was going to soil them right because it just wasn't right and then it took me a while to sit back down at the piano it took me a while to sit down with, uh, you know one of my guitars in my hand that i wrote one of the songs with and and sit down in my space to do that because i i don't you know i'm like maybe other songwriters that i have a spot where i do it I, granted i've written songs in other places but if i'm home or anywhere near home there's a spot that i like to sit in and you know, every once in a while, if I want to change my, my perspective, I literally just get up and walk to another part of the room or I walk outside. But it's generally the same area, and it gives me a little comfort because you have to sit down and get this done. It's not like, you know, a song comes to me in 15 minutes, I pop the guitar in my hand, and I sit down and done. Yes. Like, yeah, you can do that if you're in the studio and whatnot, but it just it doesn't work like that for me. And I've recorded some songs that I've written in the studio, that, but I've already walked in with an idea. I've already walked in it's already been somewhere. It's already taken a walk, if you will. And um, that's that's part of the creative process. You know, I hope the next time that we talk that we have a more in-depth uh, conversation about the nuts and bolts as I see them. And I kind of alluded to that in terms of how I sit down, how I do it. Uh, I've got a lot more new music coming up. I hope to invite some guest songs so we can play some of these songs. And, and um, you know, we'll be doing that every so often, playing songs from the old record. And, debuting some new ones before uh, we even put them in the press, right? And so, um, you know, you can download the music and stream it. Uh, the Red Floors at Apple, Spotify, YouTube, Amazon. You can buy the vinyl at Amazon, the redfloors.com, functionaries.com. Um, and I, 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 I talk about this theme with a lot of humility because, or as much as I can muster because, there are people that are much more accomplished, much more, um, uh, the people that I admire tremendously that will never know that, of course, that I admire them tremendously, but that I do um, as artists and, and, and what little I know about their humanity as human beings, and, but I really as artists. And I, I, uh, I'm, I'm humbled that, that I've given myself this gift to give myself the time to do it. And it really is.
is <clears throat> with no um, lack of humility. And I enjoy it. I hope you enjoy it. And I hope that uh, you know we have more time to spend and uh, that this isn't the last time. This is 57 from the Red Floors. And so you can buy it, like I said. Sure. There's an insert, so when you open it up, it's, you know, it opens up. Yeah, open it up because it's plastic. But if you could, and it's got a lyric sheet inside, it's got a couple more cool photos. This photo was actually taken on the road at my ranch. I had this idea for the cover from a cover of a Crosby, Stills, and Nash record that I really like. And not so much the road part of it. But just kind of the way people were standing around and you know i buy my music on uh, vinyl right and so i i had an idea for that i was like where have i seen this before and it's kind of thumbing through my record collection and i came upon that record i'm like this is what i want it to look like and so uh, the artist who did the graphics on it she's from new york and uh, amy resnick and she did a great job and um, i really appreciate her uh, people that took the photographs on it, the photographer from here in the past. Uh, and uh, I, of course, our producer and they're telling me I'm done out of time. Anyway, thank you very much. If you saw it today, if you see it later, great. And we'll be back soon with another episode of what I call Animal.